Our first guest is Alwa Farah, a filmmaker whose work focuses on politics, gender and identity. Please welcome Sister Alwa. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the show. Now look, first of all, you're a proper academic, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, we're just looking down the list of your achievements and we were talking about an MPhil in African Studies at Cambridge, a degree in Sociology at London School of Economics, mashallah and a PhD at Cambridge. Now let's get to the bottom of this. Have you always been into studying and academia or is it something that came about when you were doing your first degree? Um, I would say it was definitely something that came about when I started my first degree. Um, I think before then I was definitely into academia but I didn't take it as seriously. I mean, when I was in high school and when I was in college, I think I was very average in the way I performed. You know, I, I lived a very average sort of, I didn't work too hard. But I think once I started my undergrad degree and I was able to start research, mm. um, that's really where my passion developed, knowing that I could really research one topic specifically and delve into that sort of world made me really, really fall in love with academia. Alhamdulillah. I mean, research as well is a key thing, especially when you were doing the Master of Philosophy as well, that obviously your thesis is supervised then, isn't it? Um, and is that where you then kind of got the passion of studying African studies? Yeah, um, I during my undergrad, I did journalism, and then I went to study sociology. And it was really during my time at LSE that I sort of was able to even dwell into um, African studies and even studying Africa is something I'd never done until that point and that's sort of like where I'm from and my heritage and just being um, able to look into that um, really was inspiring to me and so I decided to take on this journey of sort of making that you know doing a whole degree in African studies which was really a great time for me because I was able to learn so much, you mm. know, in terms of politics, in terms of development. Um, and it was really one year, but it, I, I was able to get so much out of that year. A lot wow. of young people don't generally have a close link to the homeland, inverted commas, whether it's Pakistan, whether it's Somalia, uh, and they don't really know much about their heritage, about their roots. They hear stories from their parents. Uh, what would you recommend for younger people that are not really connected to their to their original roots about studying and, and finding out more about what's happened in the past? Mm, good question. <laughs> yeah, that is a really good question. I think for me, um, it was really surrounding myself with people from a similar heritage to me and just being able to discuss our identity, not only in terms of, you know, what that looks like back home, but also in terms of being a diaspora. And being in the UK and being sort of Somali and being Muslim here in the UK, what does mm. that look like for us? And once I was able to engage in conversations like that in the, you know, here, that was when I sort of developed an interest to what home looked like, you know, mm -hmm. back there. And um, it was only through having those sort of discussions that I was able to even start, you know, to begin to um, think about you know, my heritage, but also conversations at home. I mean, mm. I grew up with my parents always talking about home and I feel like a lot of diaspora kids and teenagers can relate to this, but it's very much a separation between what um, ho home looks like and, you know, at home and then what home looks like outside and mm. the way you mm. view your identity and view your heritage. And home can be very distant, obviously, when you were studying at university as well. So when a few of you started coming together, alhamdulillah, you've done a documentary that was uh, uh, aired in, uh, in The Guardian and also the British Film Institute as well. Uh, Somali Nemo, tell us all about it, please. Yes, yeah, so Somali Nemo was really inspired by my time at Cambridge. Um, as I said, it was one year, but it was a very fundamental year in my life. And, um, you know, coming from London, I was able to, I came from sort of this, very multicultural background, you know, mm. living in London, you just see everyone and you come to this space, which is very much, you know, very traditional, very white. And Somali Nemo is really just, um, it just means Somaliness and what it means to sort of bring your Somali heritage to a place that's so unlike home. Mm -hmm. And um, the documentary pretty much just explores sort of what it means to be black and Muslim and Somali at the University of Cambridge. 
And we always say that it's sort of a celebration of our Somali heritage and what it looks like. You get to see a really visual insight into what it looks like to be Somali at Cambridge. You know, we um, engage in our traditions there, you know, with the backdrop of sort of what you would envision Cambridge to look like. But it's this really sort of antithesis of um, traditional Somali culture and traditional, I guess, British culture. Um, so it's a, it's a merge of the two worlds. And what, what does that fusion look like? I mean, you know, as you said, talk about Somalia culture, British culture. What does that fusion, What are the key things that came out of it? Was it food? Was it, you know, fashion? What are, what are the, the politics, for example? The, you know, the welfare system, uh, decor around our house. What kind of practical things came out of the, the research in the film? Yes, so there was a few things that we wanted to really highlight. Um, so a really main scene is sort of like the, tra the traditional Somali living room. Um, and we sort of recreated that set to make it look like what, you know, the sort of living room we grew up in. Um, and that's really where a lot of the discussions in the documentary take place. It's mm. just us four girls just sitting around, you know, drinking tea in our traditional Somali home clothing and just being really relaxed. And then you see a sort of um, transition to um, the former hall in Cambridge, which is like the quintessential, you know, Cambridge space where you have the portraits and the fine dining and all that stuff. So it's a really um, interesting contrast of the two, but also it's a merge of the two and it's showcasing that we are Somali and we are British. You know, it, we don't have to pick and choose one. We can be both. So important that as well, isn't it? It's breaking that stereotype of what people suddenly think of, of people who come from uh, an African heritage. And then being at an elitist university at Cambridge as well, they always say that dialogue comes before discussion. So it must have really broken down the barriers in that. Yes, definitely. Uh, and ca can they exist? You know, can they really merge? Because they are so distinct. You know, if I look back at, you know, uh, you know, somebody from the Pakistani diaspora, I look at our heritage, our food, our clothing, etc. Uh, and then, you know, you look at something back in Glasgow, you know, can these things really mix? Can Somalia and Cambridge really mix? What does it, you know, what does it feel like trying to bring them together? I, I think it's just about making space for both. Um, and I don't think it's necessarily a conscious decision. It's just more about sort of knowing that you can bring both if mm. you choose. And, you know, that's something the documentary explores as well. It's just really trying to send a message out to, you know, diaspora um, teenagers or Muslim teenagers or black teenagers that, like, you can come to Cambridge and bring yourself fully. You don't have to feel like you need to assimilate or that you have to change the way you are. You know, all the four girls in the documentary were very different, you know. Um, the other three girls wear headscarves. And, you know, it's, in Cambridge, it's a very difficult space because yeah, most yeah. people look a certain way. And so to come to this space and say, I'm going to bring my, you know, my religion fully and I'm going to embrace my um, blackness and my heritage fully, it's a difficult thing to do. But just showcasing that you can do that and you can be successful in doing that is really important. Mashallah. And really important as well. I mean, that's great. It's great for Madawa as well, mashallah. And going now, what's, what's the future projects then for Awa? Um, inshallah, I want to continue to um, make films and make documentaries about um, underrepresented voices. I mean, I'm very passionate about storytelling, which is what I do in my writing and my research and, you know, as a producer. But I want to definitely continue doing that visually um, as much as I do that in writing. Let, let me ask you a couple of controversial questions now, right? <laughs> it's not, you're not going to get off so lightly. Yeah. Um, do you think, I mean, there's two sides of the coin here. Do you think that the kind of white community or Cambridge community, if you want to call it, there might be a fear that, you know, this new culture is coming over, whether it's Somali or Pakistani or Bangladeshi or whatever, and it's taken over. And secondly, is it a fear amongst, you know, uh, Somalian children, Pakistani children, black children, that, you know, I I'm afraid to actually show what I, where I really belong or a part of my heritage because it might not be accepted. Are, are there two different, is there a class of cultures at all? I think with anything, there's always the potential of being sort of like a clash of cultures. And as I said earlier, I think it's more about yourself as an individual and the way you decide to turn up to these spaces. I mean, if you come to Cambridge 
already feeling insecure about who you are and what you know what you can do or what you can't do that's going to have a massive impact on you know the way you experience that time and that's how I felt initially for the first three months of being at Cambridge I felt very much you know oh no one looks like me I don't really belong Mm -hmm. here Mm -hmm. but it was once I was able to really get comfortable and find people and find communities and that's why I really really encourage students to find communities of people who have similar backgrounds and similar experiences to you because that's where you really get to have an open dialogue about the experiences you're having and in terms of you know us taking over and taking up space um at the end of the day there's only three percent of black people in the whole of cambridge and there are not that many muslim people and so although the sort of narrative nowadays looks like there is you know a lot of black people mm. or a lot of you know i don't know like but as a percentage they're still quite a lot right. yeah yeah from very the same community yeah. very low yeah so, Alwa, I mean, uh, now, obviously, it was a great point that name raised here as well. How was the interaction actually with your teachers as well then? Because obviously, a black woman with a strong character and obviously strong in her um, African knowledge as well. How was the interaction with the actual teachers as well? I mean, my interactions um, were mostly positive just because, you know, I was in the African Centre at Cambridge, which... I guess is more um, forward looking than a lot of other traditional sort of departments. Um, So fundamentally, I had a really positive experience. But still, again, you know, all my lecturers were white, even as, um, you know, even me studying African studies, you know, all my lecturers and all the teachers I had were white. And so it was just still a long way to go in terms Mm. of like having you know, varied voices and varied knowledge when it comes to like, teaching. Um, but luckily, I was very lucky in terms of my supervisor and the teachers that I had. Um, yeah. Well, look, inshallah, hopefully you'll be one of those lecturers soon. Uh, we make that that happens. Now, look, let's finish off on a lighter note. If there were two or three things that you could use to try and bring the two cultures together, what, what would they be? For example, food, music, fashion, what, what kind of things would you use to try and give people the confidence that are watching, that want to try and promote their diaspora amongst their, you know, white friends, black friends, Pakistani friends. What are the two or three things that you want to, you'd want to recommend to people? I think for me, conversation is always, I think, the first thing I would mm-hmm. say. Just sitting around with people and having open and honest conversations about your tradition and your cultures and where you're from. And there were so many students I was able to connect with sure. just by having honest conversations. I mean, even people from, you know, middle class backgrounds mm-hmm. who went to private schools, I was able to really find a similarity through conversation and just sitting down and speaking with people. And I think that's why it's so important to just open yourself up to conversation and not feel closed off because you are not like a lot of people in this space you know you can find so many similarities with people and at the end of the day we're just human beings and uh-huh. we're just all uh-huh. and was it over a cup of somalian tea or <laughs> english breakfast tea <laughs> um english breakfast tea i think at cambridge but okay, so you, you had to accept something <laughs> and it looked tea. absolutely brilliant now all important question where do we get to see the documentary is it available so, online Yes, yeah, so the documentary mm. is online at The Guardian. So at The Guardian, if you type in Somali Nemo, it should be up there and you can watch it also on YouTube um, on The Guardian website. Super. Absolutely. Well, we look, love it. absolutely huge, huge du'as and prayers that you get all these qualifications, mashallah, that are, you know, in the pipeline as well. And your PhD, what's it in again? It's in sociology. Fantastic. Mashallah. And we hope that you become a lecturer there as well. And next time we speak to somebody like yourself, they come and say, well, out of my lecturers, there was one sister who was, you know, different from everybody else. Who made a great cup of English tea. (laughs) (laughs) Brilliant. (laughs) Jazakallah khair. Asalaamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair. Thanks for being with us. Brilliant. Absolutely amazing. Live the life.